Hey guys, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let me share with you what you will be needing. So we're going to be, I'm gonna be demonstrating on the mannequin and on the worksheet. You can do it on a mannequin, you can do it on the worksheet, or you can do it on yourself. You can either, if you're at home, you can do it on someone at home or yourself, or if you're at school, then you can go back and um, in the evening when you're at home, you can try it on someone at home. But I'll be using the mannequin for a couple things. In your kit, you have a few items. You have a, it looks like a popsicle stick, but we call it our spatula, okay? Then we have also two you could use instead of the spatula. This one's a little bit longer. It's a one-sided Q-tip. So you can use this um, just because it's longer. Or you can use a brush. Usually um, people, just stylists, just, they just use the disposable items, but you can also use a brush. You don't have to, but you can. That will be an item that we might um, be using. For our brow mapping, we have in um, your packet pickup kit, you have a little cut, Dixie cup with a string inside. Be careful, this string is dipped in product. So when we use it, it's going to leave um, a stain of this dark product on the skin. So when you touch it, you'll get it on your fingers and it is pretty messy, okay? It does come off, but it is pretty messy, so that's why it's, it's not just a random string. It's in the cup because it's stained with product. Okay, so we're going to be using that. There's an itty bitty little um, map, uh, not map pencil, a brow pencil, and um, it's one of the self sharpening ones where you pull on the paper and it sharpens. So it's little because I had just 12 and I had to make sure everybody had. Um, a pencil to work with so that's why it's so tiny so we'll be using this as well you also have one of the little razor um, uh, uh, it might be a different color this one's pink but it might be a different color so you have that you have also two in your pick in your kit your packet you have this particular packet. It's your makeup packet with all of the different um, pages. Let me show you what we have here. This is the one that, these are the ones that you'll be needing. The long face, the face shapes, the eyebrow diagram, and this half face. Okay. Then when we do our mapping, you'll be needing the five different um, brow shapes, this mapping diagram, and then this one with no eyebrows, okay? So these are the sheets that we will be using. There is uh, two, there's another video that I will link um, that goes more into depth with the eyebrow um, technique, the design technique. So please make sure you check that out on Schoology. You will be um, starting that video at minute two with 24 seconds okay so you don't have to watch the beginning part of it just start at minute 2 and 24. all right so let's going to get started so you have your journal you have your markers you have your glue and your scissors so we are going to get started by cutting and pasting so wherever you left off on your journal we're going to go ahead and start there i'm going to go ahead and take this and i'm going to cut this out with my um, long face, any any way you want to cut it is fine. So when you are working on a client, you obviously don't get to pick the people that walk through the door, okay? You will have all kinds of people that come in, okay? Of all, from all walks of life, with all different backgrounds and stories and skin, types and hair textures and I like and I don't like and all that kind of stuff, right? They each like something different. They're not they're not all the same, okay? So you have to be ready to be able to work on anyone, right? Because you anyone can walk through that door at the salon or your studio or wherever you're you're going to be working, okay? So for example, this client comes in. Okay, she has a long face, right? Her face shape, K 
okay, is lo more long from top to bottom than it is long or wide from side to side, right? She has hair that's long one length. It's all one length. There's no layers. It's very heavy at the bottom. So it kind of gives her this bell type, right? It's very wide here, very narrow here. Not very flattering, okay? Her eyebrows, right? She has a big forehead and her eyebrows are, are very low and they're arched but down going down they point downwards so it definitely brings her whole face down okay so when a client comes in as soon as they come in before you even say anything to them you're going to look at them right usually head to toe not very obvious of course you don't want to be there staring them up and up and down right you just want to glance over them and you want to uh, make an assessment, a professional assessment of what you are going to be working on. So obviously you would have already known, okay, this client is coming in for a haircut or a brow wax or whatever the client, you know, ha has been booked for, right? So if this client's coming in for a haircut, as soon as she, I see her, as I'm walking up to the reception counter to greet her, I can see her hairstyle. Okay, she gets a haircut. In my mind, I'm thinking, we need to give her a fringe, aka bangs, to cover up for her forehead so that her face doesn't look so long. We need to um, minimize that space here. Okay, so that's one thing I would recommend. Another thing is I would add some layers to give her some volume up here to balance out the volume that she has at the bottom. That's not very flattering for her face uh, face shape, okay? So those are things that you'll learn to catch on to as you progress through your cosmetology education career. When you go to a client, you see them, you know exactly, okay, well, this, 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 and that, I need to make adjustments to. I'm going to suggest that to the client. And most clients will go with what your suggestions are, but some clients are kind of stuck in their ways and say, no, this is how I fixed my hair for the last 20 years and I don't want to change it. So, okay, fine. Not, not, maybe we can do a different hair color or something of the sort. Okay. So be aware some clients, they like what they like. Okay. And some clients are very open to, to suggestions and to trying new things out. So because you are the professional and clients will come in most of the time we'll come in, you know, open to suggestions of you, the pressure, what do you think, with? what color do you think will look good on me, right? They always ask that. You need to know the face shapes, the different eyebrow shapes, the different haircuts and hairstyles and lengths and the trims. And you need to know all of that so that way you can give that professional suggestion. So let's let's go through something really quick. So go ahead and we're gonna I'm gonna use a black sharpie, but you can use any color. You can use pencil is fine. So this client here, what I would do, and I'm just gonna pick just random, not anything in particular, but I would give her. Let's say she doesn't want to um, cut straight across a uh, straight across fringe, right? She just wants you know, to keep it long, not too much of a change, but just a little bit. So what I would do is I would add some curls, some volume by adding some shorter pieces through here. So see how this evened it out? So now she doesn't have that bell type of a look, right? And her fringe, she doesn't want to cut them really short because she wants to put her hair in a ponytail fine. So I'm going to give her a side part and then we're going to give her this type of a fringe. Okay. See how that got rid of the, the big forehead that she had? The eye isn't drawn to there, right? Her eyebrows are still going downwards. There's only so much you could do with the eyebrow, right? You can't like wax the whole thing off and then paint it on and then you're good to go. Okay, but suggestion would be to start going to the, into this direction a little at a time is to make an adjustment to her brows. So maybe I would fill in her brows and go upward and then come down with it. Okay, it, although yes, I know it's very, very dark and bulky. Of course, it's the black Sharpie, 
But do you see how just making the line, filling in some space, because she had them very thin, make them, making them thicker, going straight across and then coming down. Do you see how it changed the shape of her eye, of her face? The face here automatically droops down. Here, yes, it's still going downward, but it's not as much. It opens up just a little bit, okay? Adding, uh, adding in some, some, you know, um, some contouring with her makeup, you know, bringing this over, you know how they do, you know, plumping up the lip a little bit. It definitely, you know, changes the look of a person, giving a little bit of a contour to hide a little bit of the forehead even still. Definitely gives a client a different look and then coming in with the nose and such. So always being able to look at a person and, and just artistically, what can I do to enhance to improve, to hide, to better a client's look or appearance um, in your professional opinion, is, is, that's just definitely something that you always want to be able to do. So brows play a huge part in shaping a person's face, okay? So let's go ahead and turn the page. And then what I like to do, my whole point of this, and I actually forgot to bring my magazine over, so one second, let me grab the magazine. Okay, so I like to take just magazines, old magazines, it doesn't matter. And I like to find models faces. Now this one's perfect because she doesn't have a lot of brow going on. Sorry, I apologize for the glare. But I like to come in and I like to kind of add eyebrows, like various eyebrow shapes. And I like to just play with it. Okay, and just give her different designs. Okay, Dif practice my brow designs onto my, my client per se. It's a lot easier to be able to do a client on a, on a magazine, obviously that's gonna really through, than it is to do it on a person because people sometimes are hard to come by. So usually the big, the bigger faces work the best. For example, this client here. Client comes in and she says, okay, I wanna adjust my brows. Okay, now what, what would I do? Okay, well, she likes the shape, she just wants to clean them up, okay? Or I need to match, cause not everybody are, you know, brows are uh, sisters, not twins, right? So what would I do here? Well, this one, she has a little bit more straight of a brow here. She's got a little bit of a dip. So I would come in and I would color this in here. I would take a little bit of that off, give it a little bit of arch, bring it down, bring it back nice and straight like so, right? And fill that in. And then I would do the same thing on the other side. So using a magazine, you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect picture. It can be, you know, a child even. Just as long as you have a face and an eyebrow that you can use, it can even be a small, you know, a small image coming in and making any adjustments and not to deface the magazine or the picture or the person of the picture no none of that okay we're not putting mustaches and devil horns on here okay we're just coming in and okay if i if this is a client that came in and she wanted to change the shape or enhance the shape what would i do okay would i give her a very sharp uh inside corner would i give her a longer tail would i give her more of an arch Okay, what, what is it that I would do to change the client's appearance should that have been the client that came into the salon that day? Okay, so using a magazine is definitely always a, an awesome way to just really play with, you know, practicing and drawing out your um, brow shapes. Um, permanent marker works best, um, but you can always use marker. Map pencil um, pen works okay. Matte pencils and crayons don't really work very well, but uh, permanent markers work awesome, okay? The thin ones would be best. This one's really thick. So that's what I would um, suggest as far as for practicing the different shapes. So keeping all of that in mind, let's very quickly, now we've already done this before, so very quickly we're going to go over, <clears throat> excuse me, the shapes of the face. So let's go ahead and take this and we're gonna cut these out. And we're going to 
tape them on our page or glue them on our page. Alrighty. So this one here, we are going to glue, and we're going to very quickly going uh, going to go over our basic shapes. And these are our face shapes. Okay, <clears throat> with our face shapes, here we go. I'm going to use red. We're going to go very quickly. We've already gone over this before. I'm just going to review, okay? An oblong. An oblong face shape is going to be longer up and down. Okay, then it is sideways. Okay, so it's long, up and down, right? A rectangle is exactly it. You're looking for those four corners, okay? The rectangle definitely diff is very similar to the oblong. The difference is the rectangle, you're going to have more of that, those corners. The oblong is going to be more of a curved at the, at the corners. But the rectangle is still longer up and down than it is side to side, okay? Your round. Your round is going to be pretty much even all the way through, which is going to give you that round shape. There's no corners. There's no one longer than the other. And just very rounded corners, okay? Your square, very similar to the round. Pretty much all the way up and down, side to side is the same. Okay, this is the same as this is the same. This, These two, it was longer up and down than it is side to side. Except for, for the square, you're going to be getting these square corners. Okay, very, uh, typically very chiseled, chiseled jaw on this one. Okay, the hairline at the temporal area definitely comes back a little. So these two are very similar to these two, except this is longer and this is not, okay? With the inverted triangle, you're going to have a point here at the chin, and then you're going to have a wider um, forehead, okay? So wide at the top, narrow at the bottom, okay? Your heart, it's a very similar to the inverted triangle. You've got the wideness up here and then the narrow here, except for here you have your widow's peak, your V-shape. And then, of course, your hairline kind of curves, okay? Very similar. Then we have our diamond. With our diamond, you're going to have wide from the cheekbone areas, okay? And then narrow at the forehead and at the chin, making a diamond, okay? Your triangle. Your triangle is going to be wider, very similar to this, but the, tri the inverted triangle, but upside down. Your triangle is going to be wide at the jaw area and very narrow at the forehead, right? So that makes your, your triangle. Same to your inverted triangle, just upside down. And then your oval, according to Leonardo da Vinci a long time ago, your whoops, your oval is just um, is the perfect face shape, okay? Symmetrical, and everybody back in the day wanted to have that face shape, and so they used your makeup to create that face shape, which is what contouring does nowadays, okay? It makes corrections to all of the different uh, features of these face shapes. Okay, so those are your face shapes. Keeping those in mind because eyebrows, that plays a part when you're doing your client's eyebrows. Okay, all right, so we're going to go ahead and do our eyebrow diagram. Okay, I'm going to cut out these shapes here. There are five shapes we're going to be looking at at the moment. There are millions of people, so there are so many different variations of shapes, but these are the basic ones that we will be looking at, okay? So these are our eyebrow diagrams.
you do a eyebrow diagram whenever you are working with a client trying to find a brow shape that best suits their facial features okay their face shape and their features which include the eyes then i'm going to take this piece here and i'm going to go ahead and cut it and add that to my page so when you are working with a client and the client comes in and says i want to um, I want you to arch my brows. I want you to reshape my brows or I want to change the look of my brows or I just want a, you know, brow tweeze or a threading or a waxing or whatever the client's asking for that you offer. You know, there are certain points that you need to pay attention to to make sure that the brows are in line correctly. Okay? So... There are, the first brow that we have is the rounded brow. The rounded brow, and I'm going to use my red marker, okay? But the rounded brow at the arch, it has a curve, okay? It has a curve at the arch. Does not have a point, okay? That's how you find that rounded um, brow. The S-shaped brow, if you were to flip the client's face this direction, right? It looks like an S, right, on both. So it has a wiggle, okay, on the design. Your soft angle is very similar to your hard angle, okay? Your soft angle, okay, has a point at the arch. The difference with the hard angle is that the angle is very steep, is more steep than the soft angle, okay? But definitely has that arch. Then you have your flat brows. Now there's various, uh, there are different variations of each one, but the flat brow does not go up. You notice the S shape goes up and it wiggles, even though it wiggles, it goes up. The round goes up. Both of the angles go up. The, the flat just goes straight across. Typically it does come down, sometimes it just goes straight. Okay? So, basic shapes. Okay? Now, in the video, the other vi the next video you're going to watch, we cover these different shapes and how to make some of these and correct some of these. Okay, so I'm not going to go into that with this, this particular spot, but I want to show you how we get that diagram quite very quickly. And the next one we're going, in the next video, I'll show you how to um, do this with a ruler and then how to do it and fold your paper to match to see if you did it correctly. Client comes in, they say they want a brow wax, just check my brows, make sure they're good. This is how we do. Take a uh, Q-tip, I like these because they're long, okay? And they fit across the face. The popsicle stick, like spatula, okay? They work fine, okay, they work fine. Um, or a brush, works, works good as well. Okay, so your first line is going to be, okay, from the inside, I'm sorry, outside of the side of the nose, from the nostril, up, straight up, okay, that is where the brow starts, that right there, what I call, that is my A, point A. And you'll see in the next video more explanation. The second measurement that I'm going to do is from the corner of the outside of my nose, straight up. The client is looking straight forward, the outside of the iris. Now, some students, um, they always forget the which one's the iris and which one's the pupil. Okay, so the pupil, the black part, the pupil starts with a P, the black point, okay, is P point, okay, if you just can remember it that way. The iris is the outer part, the iris, the eye has the little lines, and then iris starts with an I, 
So that's just how I tell my students to remember it. Okay. So on the outside of the iris, the, the clients are looking straight forward. Okay. The side of the nose, outside of the iris, and then that there is going to be your letter, what I call B. And that is going to give you your arch, where it's going to tell you where your arch is going to be. And then your next point is from the corner outside, I keep saying corner, from the outside of the nose, the nostril area, to the corner of the eye, okay, that is C, what I call C. And that is going to tell you where the brow should end, okay, so the start point, the arch, and the end point. Now, balance side to side from A to C, you have line number four, okay. So this is going to, and this is D, but this is going to where the brow starts and where the brow ends going upwards, okay? So you want to make sure it's even side to side. In the next video, I'll go more into depth with this, so I don't want to explain too much in this video. Um, but please make sure to take a look at that uh, video. So that's on paper. And then again, like I say, with a magazine, okay, let me find my, my magazine again. Okay. Here's my magazine, here's my client. She doesn't have very much brow, which is okay. So if I wanted to, okay, I'm gonna take my pen, my, my, uh, um, I don't wanna draw on that. I'm gonna take my Q-tip, okay? She's, uh, she's pretty much straight. I'm gonna go from the outside corner of my nose I'm gonna draw straight up, okay? Then I'm gonna go from the outside corner of my nose. She's not looking straight, so I would have to kind of imagine that she would be looking, she's looking that way, so if she were to be looking straight, it'd probably some, be somewhere around here. And then my last one, corner of the eye to my side of my nose. There's my pupil, okay? So this would be A, this would be B, this would be C. D would be straight across. So if my brow started here, it would have to be straight across like, whoops, like so. Okay, so that way I know that my brow, where it's gonna start and where it's gonna end. So let me use my purple here. So if this is my brow, this is where the brow is going to start, right? And then I'm going to arch it however I want to arch it, right? And then I'm going to come and bring it down. See that there? Where it starts from the line D. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't label that line. That was line D. Where it creates my my line where I should start and stop, okay? And then my arch, if I wanted to arch it a little bit more to play with it, I could arch it, give it like, give her a little bit more of an arch. If I wanted to round her out a little bit, I could round out the design, okay? Obviously, once you start to play with it and it gets thicker and thicker, you can't really go back over it to make it any more thin but definitely something to play with, okay? Magazines are easy to come by, even, like I said, even if it's a small image, you can still do all of these designs to it, okay? So if this were it, okay, let's check to see. Okay, so outside corner of the nose, well, her brow, technically, her brow is a little bit, we need to get rid of that, okay? Then if we go, she looks like she's looking straight out. I'm gonna go from the in outside of my nose to the outside of the pupil, the arch. Yeah, arch is pretty good, okay? So side of the nose, very corner of the eye, the brow goes over just a little bit, but pretty good, okay? So here's where we the anatomy of the face comes into play. So we have the client here, right? We're making these adjustments to the client, right? So yeah, your brow's a little bit too far in. So we're gonna take that much out. If we're gonna do the other side, the other eye, right? So let's go ahead and come on in. She's looking straight. My point is straight. So we take this off, right? According to our design. 
Now, textbook says this is how you measure a client's eye, uh, eyebrow, and how you you design you, you design it out, right? Some sometimes you have to make adjustments to the rule because if the client's facial features, if their anatomy calls that their bridge of the nose area, their eyes are wide apart, their brows are you know put set in they grow in a way that if I were to take this this section out and this section out and this is where her brow starts on both sides, there might be too much space here. And so if there's too much space here, because that is how the bridge of her nose, this little top part is, is how she was born, right? Then this, this might look weird. So I might have to break the rules and go inside of this line A on both sides. Okay, oops, I went over a little bit. So you always have to make sure, like I was saying, you have to be aware of your client of the different face shapes. You have to be aware of the client's facial features, okay, and what you can do to enhance or adjust those, right? So this is textbook, but real life person coming in, if you follow textbook every single time, sometimes it doesn't work. So you have to really be able to play with, you know, the knowledge that you have. You have to practice, 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 and draw and design and practice on mannequins and models on magazines and on yourself and things of the sort. Draw it out. And then that way, whenever you have a client, before you wax all of this middle part off and really give her bridge of the nose area a really unpleasant look, you, you want to be able to draw it out and show your client and say, okay, look, we measured it out. This is what it's going to look like if I remove this inside hair. I suggest we leave, we take a little bit out. We leave a little bit in. That way, you know, you're, you're more symmetrical, but you don't have this big wide open space. Okay. So you definitely want to make sure that you're aware of all the different shapes. And the best way, like I said, is to get you a magazine and do your magazine and come on in, take your, take your um, tool, whichever, whatever tool you're using, go from the outside of the nose, straight up. Okay, see? Here, her brow comes in a little bit too much. Okay, corner of the eye. No, let's go. She's looking pretty straight. Okay, that arch is perfect. And then here, corner of the eye. And that tail end of the brow is perfect, okay? Just the inside of her brow was not technically, book-wise, it was not on point, right? But if we were to remove that, depending on the anatomy of her face here, her bangs are down so I can't see it, but maybe if we take that off, it makes her look unpleasant, Okay, so always keep in mind what you're what you're doing, what you're looking at. Um, even on gentlemen, whenever you're working on gentlemen, it's really good to work on them on magazines because they always have a lot of brow hair. So it's definitely um, a good good resource. Okay, so that is our brow diagram there, and then you can go ahead at this point. You can stop here. Pause this video, watch the second video, okay? When you come back to it, when you're done watching the second video that started at two minutes and 24 seconds, I want you to come in here and I want you to draw your brow, okay? So you're going to draw your brow. So you're gonna pause that video. You're going to watch the second video. You're going to glue, cut and paste, glue this image here. And then you're going to look at the mirror, look at your shape, determine which, which one of these, which one of these is you. Okay, which one do you have? And then I want you to draw it out here. Um, you're going to have to gently draw in the side of the nose on her here because she doesn't have it drawn, okay? 
So then come in and do your your four A B C and then straight across your number uh, your letter D, and then draw whether you have the rounded brow, the S shape, the flat, or either one of the angles. Oh, sorry, my computer glitched a little bit. Um, but yeah, any one of those angles that uh, brow shapes that you have, draw it on this design here. And you can draw it here, okay? All right, so that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that worked out for you. If you have a mannequin, okay, you can also do on the mannequin. Go from the, you know, side of the nose. Then if they were had a pupil and they're looking straight, that's the arch of the brow, corner of the eye. That is the end of the brow. And then, of course, side to side to make sure that it starts and stop, um, starts and stops at the right point. Okay, so with a mannequin, you can use, um, I would use the line eyeliner. I would not use liquid as liquid is a little bit harder to come off. So I would just use regular eyeliner. I would put a little bit of foundation down first so that way it does not stain your mannequin. And I would use makeup remover to remove the makeup um, and don't let it sit for too long so it does not stain your mannequin. Okay. All right. So thank you so much for um, watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Don't forget to watch that second video. Then come back and do this um, particular um, design with your uh, particular brow that you have. And then there's also another mapping, uh, brow mapping video as well. So thank you so much. If you have any questions, let me know.